We continue part two, the fact that Yeshua is Mashiach ben David. And this is what we're really waiting and excited about because this is, this is Him coming back as the King of kings and Lord of lords and the line of the tribe of Judah. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we go on. And the Holy Spirit poured out in Joel chapter 2. And this, think about it, it's 500 years before it happened. Joel wrote this. And here's happening in Acts chapter 2. But again, it happens twice. Because it happened at the day of Pentecost, right? Yeah. You know, Yeshua been, been uh, uh, Yeshua ben Yosef or Mashiach ben Yosef came the first time. And the Pentecost happened. And the Spirit of God... Can you imagine what that looked like? I mean, with with fire, real fire, yeah, and power on these people. And it, we talked about it last week. And 3,000 people were added to the church in a day. And children coming back to their fathers and their, and their mothers. Children who have been away, have been away from God. And we pray about it, don't we, Marianne? We pray about it. We seek His face. We cry out for it. But we can't make it happen. We can't do anything about it but just pray and beg and plead, God, let it happen. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Amen. The closest thing I can relate and feel it in my inside was when I was a child, uh, my parents, they gave one major Christmas every year. I mean, Christmas time for me, now don't misunderstand, I don't do Christmas anymore. But I'm just saying from a, I can't relate, I cannot think of anything else that you know is coming, right? Even as a child, you know this day is coming. My parents wouldn't even tell me when it was. Because you get out of school about two weeks before Christmas came, right? At least you did when I was in school. And, uh, and I don't know what this is about you getting out of school in May. We were in school till June, you know? It's like everything's so weak now. But anyway, it's Christmas. And I, w- I know when, when I would get up Christmas morning and there'd be all these toys everywhere. And I'd be like, I'd be like on high. It'd be like incredible. And there's food and a lot of sugar. I mean, <laughs> cookies and cakes and chocolate covered nuts. And just, it was like a wonderland. But you never knew this was coming. You never knew when it was coming, but you knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. <coughs> it's the same as this we're getting closer and closer and closer to this day that the Spirit of God comes down. And we're waiting for it. We know it's coming. We can't imagine what it's going to be like. It's going to be far more incredible than we can think. Some of our loved ones that were afar off are going to be drawn near. It's going to be miraculous. He's going to, and and, and, and in the Jews' hearts, in Israel's hearts, He's going to save millions at one time. Their eyes are going to be open in an instant and they're going to they're going to know who he is Hallelujah. it says in, in Zechariah that they talking about the Jews will look upon the one they appears and they will reach out they will mourn for him and they will cry out for him and they will say have mercy we see it now we get it you see well you say why are they so different why does that why is that it's God's plan and you're welcome to know his plan that's amazing that yeah. you see, he 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 hid he hid the truth from his own people. I looked at it in a book I wrote actually. I said, you know, it's like he planned a birthday party for his own people. And you know, if you get a if you've ever had a surprise birthday party as an adult, you can really relate to this. And my wife did it to me on my fiftieth birthday. It, it blew my mind. Actually, she did it on my fortieth too, but. And I had no idea. I had no idea she was doing this. And all these people were there. People I hadn't seen in forever. And my whole church family was there. It, it was so amazing. I was so overwhelmed. 
But here's the thing. They all knew. Because they came. They had to know or they wouldn't have got there. I was the only one that didn't know it. And I was so full of joy. As much as they had fun and they enjoyed it, I'm the one that got the blessing. And it's the same with Israel. They don't even see it. You can tell them as a Christian, you look, one day you're going to know that this Yeshua is your Lord. This kind, wonderful, compassionate, sweet man who gave everything for you. He is your Messiah. And you're going to see Him. You're going to understand. You're going to look upon His hands. It says it in, his, it says it in their Bible. They're going to look upon the one they pierced. And they're going to cry for Him. And they're going to be so sorry, but they're going to be so glad. And they're going to accept Him as Lord. And then that's going to be Romans chapter 11 when it says, if, 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 if their, their rejection is life for us, what will their acceptance be but life for the dead? This world is going to be covered in love. And all evil is going to be eradicated off the planet. There will be no more shootings. There will be no more COVID. There will be no people lying about it. They will be done away with. They will be eradicated off this planet. They've had every opportunity to repent. And they're going to be gone. Gone, gone, gone. And I say, Lord, please reveal the wicked man and crush and break the arm of the evil and wicked man and let it be found out until there is no more to be found out. Get him out of here, Lord. Come, Jesus, come. We're sick and tired of the evil of this planet. Come, Lord. You are Lord. Amen. Only you are Amen. Lord. Amen. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Only He's Lord. Only God. He's the only one. And anything that you do, it better be go directed for Him. That you are, you are decreased. You are little. You are nothing. You are minute. But He is glorified. He is lifted up. And you are saved by the blood of the Lamb. This righteous, good, miraculous, powerful man that could have came off the cross. He said, I could call legions of angels. He only said that so you could get it. He didn't need anybody. He could have just stepped off the cross. He could have, he could have spontaneously combusted every person that ever came near him. He, he is so, anything you think he could have done, guess what? He could have done it because he's God. Amen. But he's so full of love and he's so full of wanting restoration. And it is coming. And this evil is getting worse and worse and worse until finally it's going to poof and it's going to pop like a balloon and it's going to be gone off of here. But it's got to get worse first, let me tell you, because there are wars that still have to happen that the Bible says will happen. Worse wars than we've ever seen. They will happen. But don't be afraid. Do not let your heart be, um, what? Um, troubled. troubled, yes. Don't... Yeah. I don't even want to think of the word. But yeah, don't be troubled. Be full of joy. Because look up. It says your redemption is drawing near when you see these things happen. So look what happened on the day of Pentecost. This is so amazing. When the day of Pentecost had finally come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire. And one set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were, and here's the sad part. So many people want to focus their focus on the speaking in other tongues. And there's so much greater going on here. Amen. Yeah. There's so much greater going on than this physical aspect of speaking in tongues. But that's what everybody wants to focus on. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout, devout men, from every nation under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and they were confused because everyone heard them in their own language. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days that God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. We see some of that now. And then we see a lot of bogus of that now too. 
A lot of people want to copy and pretend like they're doing this and say they're doing this, and they're not really doing it. But I'm telling you, the time is going to come. There won't be no hiding it. It's going to be so powerful and so real. And you won't have to have any doubt if it's real or not. And on my maid servants and on my, uh, excuse me, on my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Now here's the thing. We know this is going to happen again because the first time this didn't happen. The moon didn't turn to blood and the sun was darkened for a few moments. But the moon didn't turn to blood like we see these blood moons happening all the time now. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Many people will be desperate in that day and they will cry out and they will be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Yeshua of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves also know, him they delivered by the determined purpose and knowledge of God. You have taken by lawless hands and crucified him and put him to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Bam! What I just read to you is the people who didn't die saw the kingdom of God come in power. That's coming in power. But this was just a little dowsing of power. This is like what they call the early rain, and then there's going to be a latter rain. And we don't really understand that so well because we're not from Israel. You understand in Israel, the latter rain, excuse me, the early rain, the early rain is in the, in the, in the fall. Okay? And it rains, and there's a rain season all through the winter. And then in the spring, it rains some more. But from then on, from like now in Israel, it will not rain. None. Zero. From now until the fall. It goes all summer long with no rain at all. That's just the way God does it. And it's always been that way. He said, what about, you know, no. Every day, you don't even have to look at the weather report. You know, a weatherman wouldn't be much good in Israel because they already know what the weather's going to be. God pretty much seals the deal. It's going to be rain, 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 and then no rain. And But here, it's like rain, rain any old time, right? It's not that way in Israel. So the point is, he's, telling, he's showing us this, that there's first this, this really nice rain, which is this. The Spirit of God's poured out. But in the last rain, oh my goodness, it's going to be a flood. The Spirit of God's going to come and then Jesus is going to come in His glory like we've never seen before. And with many other words, He testified and exhorted Him saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Does that sound like that could be right now, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Then those who gladly received His word were baptized and all about 3,000 souls were added to them. And so this is what I believe. There will be a remnant in the last days. But there will be a lot of people added to the remnant. There are a lot of people that we're praying for. I'm saying this. Don't lose heart. There's probably people could have gave up on you, right? And you're here. There's people I know could have gave up on me. And I'm here. Maybe they all did, but God didn't, and I'm here. Amen. I know of a lot of people that, that people gave up on, but God never gave up, and they're here. I'm telling you, don't stop praying for your loved ones. Don't give up. God very well, very well may bring them in in these last moments before everything is summed up, before that great and awesome and terrible day of the Lord comes. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all they believed were together, and they had all things in common. Now this is, this is something I do believe is coming again. I want you to hear this. 
And they sold their possessions and their goods, and they divided them among all, anyone who had need. We are going to have to become community. Amen. In other words, when somebody's in the hospital or, or sick, and we bring them a cover dish, that's nice. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about we will be all family. We will have to take care of each other because the world is going to come so hard against us. Amen. Even in this town, Paragold. Right even here. Because look, I'm telling you, there's been some very wicked and evil things done right here in this town. And I can even go back a hundred years and some of the evil and, and wicked things that were done then, then I prayed against those things and asked God for healing. But now there's been things done recently in this town that are wicked. And so uh, wickedness will come against us. But greater is he who is in us than he who is in Paragould or Little Rock or Jonesboro. Or wherever. Because don't think these little bitty towns don't have a lot of evil. That's right. I've heard, I believe it's Harris, Harrisburg, Harrisburg is full of witchcraft. So it's everywhere. But it's not telling you just to be afraid. We don't need to be afraid. We just need to understand we need to always be seeking right. What is right? What am I supposed to do? And God will tell you. God will do it sometimes. I had a person today put his hands on me. And I said, you need to take your hands off of me. And I just was kind of surprised I even said it. An old man like me. <laughs> what if the guy decided, well, I don't know. I just the, the, the Lord sometimes, you're not even thinking, sometimes the, the Word of God is just will come out of you. And the dude let his hands off of me. Anyways, I'm just saying, we need to be full of God. And, and being full of God doesn't mean everything you say is like sugar coming out of your mouth. Sometimes you're going to say some things that are God's power and God's authority. We're not, in this, we're not in the season we used to be in. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking in bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. See, we're going to do this until He comes or till we, till we go, Right? We, we've done a song before called uh, United We Stand, Divided We Fall. I'm not going to put the song up there, but you know, we're all here united. We're united, but divided we'll fall. We, we, we don't all, unless somebody puts a bomb in here, whatever. We might go all together, but most likely we will leave one at a time, two at a time, right? But guess, guess what? We're all going to be re reunited in the end Amen. around the Lord's table. Amen? Yeah. I mean, it's so wonderful. We have, to, we, have to, we have to encourage one another with these words. Because I'm telling you, when I think about this world, this situation we're in, it's, can you imagine if you had one of those little kids? I cannot imagine. I don't want to imagine you send your school child to a school and you think they're going to just be safe. They're so good. It's, but this is the world we're living in now. It's everywhere. And it, it breaks your heart. But you know what? We should not be, a, be a surprised. This is the evil we're in. But thanks be to God, it's, it's only a little bit longer. Just be faithful to the end. We praise God and have favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. More people are going to come into the church. So we, we want to receive this message. As like I said, now we're, we're on day 42. We have seven more days. So this last week of counting the Omer, you know, the counting the Omer, it's not about, it's not about counting the Omer's the, this crop every day it's about remembering every day to push closer into God get closer to him and when you fall if you fall along the way don't stay there just get up get up and keep on going 
Because he, he desires, this is what he gave his life for, to have a special people that love him and that, that are willing to do whatever he says. Amen? Amen. So let's seal this, getting ready for his return as we allow him to bless us with his benediction over our lives. <laughs>